Am I on? Yay! Good morning from the Philippines! Yay! <laughs> Yay! Hello, guys. Hopefully, you can hear me. Good morning. Uh, I wanted to sing, so, you know, I like to sing, so hopefully you can hear me. And uh, here we are going to start. I'm not sure if I started or not. I just want to make sure I'm on. Yes, I'm on. So... I want to sing because you know we're rock stars, right? So here we go. You can tell everybody acupuncture rocks. <laughs> it may look quite simple, but it'll blow your socks off. I hope you don't mind. I hope you don't mind that I'm teaching this class all on bloating, diarrhea, and gas. I hope you don't mind. I hope you don't mind that I'm teaching this class all on vomiting, nausea, and gas. <laughs> Hi guys, this is awesome. So happy to connect, to say hello to everybody. I'm going to put you up. Uh, wow, hi Alima from Morocco. Yeah, babies, we are coming from all over the world. Hi, California. I'm in Vancouver, Emanuela. Ciao from Italia. Excellent. So, we're <laughs> it'll blow your socks off. Ha ha ha. Yes, right? Hi from Norway. This is awesome. Oh, I love it. I love it. Did you like my singing? I know I'm the best rock star. I know, don't quit my day job. I know I am so much more of a TCM geek than a singing person, but I like to sing. It's fun. So, uh, you know, why not? Hi from Amsterdam. Yay. Awesome. You guys, I'm so glad you're here. Uh, <laughs> will this be recorded later? Yes, it will be recorded and I will put the, um, replay later on probably by tomorrow. South Africa. Hi, Rubina. I love it, you guys. I recognize a lot of people that contact me often that are supporting what I'm doing with TCM. You guys are all rock star. Hey, Holland, the Netherlands is in, in the house as well. This is, thank you for loving my singing. Whoa, from Algeria, I love it. This is awesome. Brazil in the house. Obrigado. Moscow, here we go. Yes. Uh, <laughs> um, if you wanted to, you can, but it'll be back city on uh, YouTube tomorrow, so no problem. Nabila, Algeria, I love it. Any Canadian in the house, let me know. I'm in Vancouver. I don't know if you could see behind me the mountains. It is a kind of cloudy day. Every time I teach online, it's always either cloudy or uh, <laughs> raining, so it's a perfect day to do this class and to do this teaching. So this is awesome. Uh, bon dia in Brazil. See, I know a bit of Portuguese. Just obrigado. Slovenia. Hi, Ljubljana. Hi. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. And of course, my Irish friends, my green Irish friends in Ireland. Love it. Hi, Elaine. This is great. So glad you guys are here. Thank you for joining. I am going to start it up. So for people that are watching the replay, uh, we're going to start right now. I have um, the link below as well telling you where everything will be. So when we have the replay, you'll have where everything starts. So you don't have to listen to my singing if you don't want to. Hi, Cal. Nice to see you here, my friend. Boy, we've known each other for a long time. Hi, Carmen. Hey, Carmen, my Toronto buddy. Excellent. So we got one Canadian in the house. That's awesome. Love it. Uh, but you live in Victoria. Okay. Elisa Angela. I love that. So yes, so you are uh, my across the water buddy. And until you, here we go, Jacqueline. We've got some people in the house that are uh, in Canada as well. But what I love is everybody's from all over the world, which is awesome. So uh, let's start it up and what we're not gonna, you know, we connect, which is my favorite thing to do. And so now we are going to do a class today on uh, every basic acupuncture phone specifically for digestive disorders. So that is going to, we're going to look at general digestion. We're going to look at upper digestive tract, 
and lower digestive tract. Now, before, <laughs> Deliana, it is amazing to see you. Oh my goodness, Deliana, long time no see, my girl. Wow, that's excellent. Look at this, Carlos from Argentina. We got everybody in the house coming in, and this is so fantastic. Hi, Deliana. There's people I've met actually in person. A lot of you I haven't met in person, but I know from uh, the support you've given me on all social media platform. So it's really cool to see. Thank you. Thank you all for being here today. As I said, we're going to look at mostly symptoms of upper digestive tract and lower digestive, digestive tract. I get all excited. Um, I want to remind us that no matter what in TCM, it's super important to make a TCM diagnosis, right? Look for the root cause because the idea is we're not a band-aid, we're a medicine that looks for the root cause of the issue and then make a TCM diagnosis, which could be stomach heat, spleen sheet deficiency, liver cheese stagnation, whatever the, the diagnosis is for each patient. Because what TCM is amazing at is really treating the person as a whole. So what I'm doing today when I'm talking about all the points for different symptoms, this is what you can incorporate in your treatment. But don't ever forget that we always have to follow a TCM diagnosis and look at what is the best to treat this person as a whole, okay? So that's very, very important. Uh, Melanie is here, I'm here at last. Well, I'm glad you joined us. <laughs> oh man, Deliana, are you still in Vancouver? I assume you're still in the Lower Mainland. So it's kind of cool to see everybody. Okay, so without further ado, I'm going, because I know everybody's time is precious, I'm going to start it up. So this is uh, my little presentation here, like I said, on digestive sim symptom. We're talking about symptom, but remember that this is definitely uh, following a TCM diagnosis, okay? So the first thing we're gonna look at is general treatment for digestion general, right? Any digestive system issue, we have to put the commander point, the rock star of all acupuncture point, stomach 36, okay? So stomach 36 is going to be your basic point, right? You pretty much, I mean, if you're facing up, obviously, if you're doing a supine session, you pretty much have to do uh, stomach 36, because it is the commander point of immune system and digestive system, right? The abdominal region. So there's two things. The first thing is in our gut, the probiotics or the prebiotics or the gut bacteria are there to sustain us and to fight anything that's invading our body, right? So Stomach 36 is really the point for digestion, but also for immune system. And immune system and digestion are very much related in Chinese medicine. Because in the five element theory, earth is the mother of metal, which means spleen and stomach, which is the digestive system, is the mother of long and large intestine, which is metal, which is the immune system. Okay, so in order to have a good immune system, we need good gut flora, we need good digestive system. That's why stomach 36 is such a great point because it encompasses everything. So that's your basic. No matter what your diagnosis is, for any digestive issues, stomach 36 is your go-to point. Awesome. Okay. Second go-to point, one of my favorite points, I think that's my second favorite point of all acupuncture point, is spleen 6. We want to use spleen 6 for a few reasons. First, it is the crossing point, right? San Yin Jiao, the crossing point at three meridian, the liver, the kidney, and the spleen, right? So when there is digestive issues that are very much related to just the spleen and stomach and the digestive system itself, spleen six has to be there because it treats anything that's happening with the spleen. But it also treats anything that's happening with the liver. And often, when we have digestive issues, it could be due to stress or liver cheese stagnation being so stressed that it creates some issue for the spleen, i.e. IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. So IBS or irritable bowel syndrome, often it is a liver cheese stagnation over-controlling spleen, making spleen deficient. So spleen 6 is a really good point for that because it treats issues affecting liver and spleen, 
and of course also kidney. So this is a really good point to put when there's digestive system issues and I obviously unless the person is pregnant because if they're pregnant this is a big no no point right so those are your two basics to start with spleen six stomach 36 great basics for any kind of digestive system issue without having to do per se uh, diagnosis right now another point that I like to incorporate in basic um, treatment for digestion is liver 13 because it is the front move point of the spleen, and we know the spleen in TCM is related to obviously everything that has to do with transforming and transporting the nutrients into energy for our body within the digestive system. So that's the first thing. The second thing, it is the zong influential point, which influence all the zong organ, which are the yin organ, right? The liver, the lung, the kidney, the heart, the spleen, right? So this is a very powerful point, specifically anything upper digestive tract or lower digestive tract. It doesn't really matter. So this is a really good point to incorporate in your treatment. So we have stomach 36, spleen 6, liver 13. Those are basic. Again, make your TCM diagnosis for each patient, but those should be incorporated in there because they're very, very good point to use. Make sense? Okay, you guys are with me? Good. <laughs> Let's continue. Okay. One of the points that I like to put, not always, okay, not at every digestive system issue, but often, I will say, is spleen 3. Because spleen 3 is, the function of spleen 3 is to transform and transport, right? Transform nutrients into energy and transport it all over the body, including the head, for energy, for clear thinking, for uh, muscle strength, for anything that has to do with being able to function, right? We utilize the food. And spleen three is the really the point that helps us with absorption. So it is a really good point if people have issues with um, celiac disease. So it's not going to get rid of celiac, right? Celiac people cannot absorb uh, gluten, and so not only that, but it can create havoc on their system, right, if they eat anything that has to do with gluten. So it is not going to get rid of celiac and certainly they can eat gluten. That's not the point. The point is it is going to help them manage the disorder, right, manage it and keep the strength of the spleen. So it's a really good point for malabsorption of nutrient. Maybe some people don't absorb iron very well, so we need to look for the root cause, right? Why is this person not uh, absorbing iron? Uh, maybe they have SIBO. SIBO is small intestine bacteria overgrowth, okay? Small intestine bacteria overgrowth, which sometimes impair absorptions of certain vitamins and minerals. So that is often a problem that we can look into and treat and address and look at diet and, and other uh, tools to help us figure it out. But no matter what, this is a really good point, Spleen 3, to help when it comes to absorbing or malabsorption of nutrients. So that'll help us a lot. Good? Okay, so we got Spleen 6, Stomach 36, and Liver 13 as your main points to go. And then we can look at Spleen 3, which is a little bit more of a malabsorption or issue with being able to digest certain food. So that's a really good point for people that have food sensitivities. So a lot of people have food sensitivities, right? They can be sensitive lactose intolerant, or they may have sensitivities to certain food like wheat or corn or bananas or anything, right? It's not an anaphylactic kind of allergies. It's just a sensitivity which creates a little bit of havoc into the body. So spleen three, great point for food sensitivities. Make sense? Good? Okay. My favorite point of all acupuncture points. My students know that when I get to teach stomach 40, I always tell them no matter what, you have to remember, this is my favorite point. Not that they need to remember that, but you know. Uh, so I love stomach 40 for many, many reasons. But today we're talking about digestion, right? So the main reason why I love stomach 40 is because it's the lower connecting point of the stomach to the spleen, right? It connects stomach to spleen, which together they are in charge of digestion. 
Now, what's good about Stomach 40 itself is that it is a really good point for phlegm, right? We know it's the best point to eliminate or to treat or to help with phlegm. And phlegm in Chinese medicine is also for people that have a lot of obesity. Excess fatty tissue is considered phlegm in TCM. So Stomach 40 is really good to help the spleen and stomach connect. What does that mean? It means it helps in metabolizing which means it helps for metabolism, right? So it really helps in balancing and helping blood sugar. I love to use this point during pregnancy because during pregnancy, it is a safe point. It really helps balance blood sugar and I get really good results in preventing uh, gestational diabetes, which is often something that can happen with pregnant women, right? So I've had patients who have come and had uh, gestational diabetes for the previous pregnancy, and then they come and see me and they're like, I'd like to avoid this in this pregnancy. So we do obviously a whole TCM diagnosis. We follow that root cause, but I always put stomach 40 because this is the blood sugar balancing point. It's the point that also helps metabolize everything. So this is a really good point. Does that make sense? So I love that about this point. So if we recap this, we have Stomach 36, commander point of the digestive system and immune, so super powerful. Spleen 6 for digestive issues, all of them and any of them, and liver 13. Then we have spleen 3 for malabsorption, and then we have stomach 40 more for metabolizing and for blood sugar imbalances. Those points are your basic digestive system issue point. Yes? Okay. Questions, let me know on all those ones we just talked about. This is basic. Again, do a TCM diagnosis, but that starts kind of at the base. Yes, we're good? All right, cool. Let's continue. Yes, we got, oh, Philippines in the house. And we've got lots of people from the USA, from everywhere. So I love that you guys are all here. I'm keeping seeing your comments and I see them as I'm talking. So I'm enjoying this. I hope you guys are enjoying this. Give me thumbs up. Tell me, woo, this is good. Okay, let's continue. Okay, so we've done the basic general treatment. Let's look at the upper digestive tract, right? So the upper digestive tract in TCM, it's going to be mostly anything happening in the physical stomach. So anything like acid reflux, uh, heartburn, nausea, vomiting, acid regurgitation, right? Anything that's really kind of like a stomach chi rebelling, right? So that's the idea. So the upper digestive tract, of course, we can have stomach pain, we have stomach ulcers. There's a lot of things that can happen in the physical stomach, but that stomach chi rebelling is what we're going to look at when we talk about symptoms of the upper digestive tract. Again, I will repeat it, when there is nausea or vomiting or acid reflux or etc., we want to do a TCM diagnosis because that's going to help us a lot in going to the root of the problem. And another thing too that I really want to emphasize is diet is super important. And the word diet, I know sometimes in translation for different languages, it means going on a diet, but that's not what I mean. I mean your nutrition, the way you eat, right? So your way of eating or the way of eating that has to be applied to patients. We have to talk about their diet, their way of eating, right? It's super important. What is TCM advocating when it comes to eating? So I want to have a little bit bracket before I continue on the points because I think that's really important. So hi, I'm here with my little board. Uh, so that way I can write on the board. So what TCM advocates first and foremost is when there is a diet, we want to eat always a whole food diet, right? So of course, we want to avoid anything that is um, processed, that is uh, altered, impaired. We want to have a whole food diet. That's the first one. The second one is we want to try to have a diet that, this is very different from Western. Of course, Western nutrition will say have a whole food diet, a real diet, right? That's very much uh, the same way. But the TCM little twist that comes very much is we're going to address the TCM pattern of the patient, right? So if someone, or patterns, if someone is cold all the time, we're not going to tell them to eat a lot of 
raw salads and smoothies and ice cream and cold food because that's going to make them colder. So they can have whole foods, but if they're on the raw diet with lots of salads and it's winter in Canada and it's uh, minus 10, right, really cold, that's going to make them colder because they're already cold. Could be due to yang deficiency or excess yin. Right? So if they have too much cold in the body or not enough heat and they're cold all the time, we're not going to tell them to eat all those kind of foods. It's still whole foods, but now we want to eat soups and stews and broth and things that are going to be warming and avoid the cold food. On the other hand, if someone is always hot, right, they feel hot all the time, they have, they're overheated, and they have maybe liver yang rising, or they have stomach heat, or they have, um, you know, liver fire, they're always irritable, they can't sleep, they're always overheated, or they have yin deficiency, which means the cooling system is not working, and they are feeling overheated, specifically at night. We don't want them to eat a lot of spicy food or alcohol. That's going to make it all worse. We want them to eat whole food, but maybe avoid all the spicy food and have something that's a little bit more blend, meaning not too much garlic, not too much spices, right? Not too much chili peppers, right? Or cayenne peppers or curries, depending what spices you like, right? So we want to adapt to the TCM pattern. Same thing for... Um, dry versus damp, right? If someone is really damp, they have a lot of mucus, greasy skin, um, they have lots of excess discharge, lots of excess dampness or phlegm in the body, we want to try to say, stay away from mucus-forming food. So we try to stay away from dairy, we try to stay away from food that is got sugar that is going to create more phlegm. On the other hand, if someone is dry, dry skin, dry hair, dry eyes, the dry mouth, dry lips, cracked lips, they're always dry, we want to hydrate and lubricate, meaning we want high water content food, and then like watermelon and cucumbers, and then we want fatty food, but good fatty food like avocado and salmon, fatty fish, right, and nuts and seeds. We are going to follow the TCM pattern, so not everybody will have the same diet, and that's how you help the digestive system. Right? We need to help. The digestive system is at the center of our health. It literally is at the center of our body. So we need to address diet because we can do acupuncture every day, but if the person is not changing their diet, it is not going to get better. Okay? That's important. The third thing is your cultural DNA. So since we have people from all over the world, right? I live in Canada, but I was originally from France, where I was born. So I always say cheese is the way I was born. I was born with cheese in my mouth. Anyway, that's a very French thing to say. The cultural DNA is something that's important to follow. So what's your background? What's your genes, right? If your genes are you're from Japan, right? Your Japanese descent, having dairy is probably not going to work for you. Because in Japan, they don't eat dairy. They don't have cow milk. They don't have dairy, right? So it probably won't work for you. Even though you live somewhere else, maybe you're third generation, second generation, and you live in another country, and you're not the first one to move there. Maybe your grandparents moved to a new country. It doesn't matter. Your cultural DNA has to be observed. So if you're dramatic, you're from Germany, and your background is from Germany, you probably won't do very well with spices, uh, because German food is a little bit more bland. It doesn't have a lot of spice, right? So you probably won't do well with lots of spices. So I always like to look at cultural DNA, specifically in Canada, because a lot of people in this country are coming from somewhere else, like I did, right? We all come to this country from somewhere else, a lot of us, because it's a new country. It's only 300 years old. So a lot of time, it's good to look at that perspective. So it's very TCM, right? It's very different than Western nutrition thinking. So those are the basic. The last one is the mindfulness, right? That is very important. So mindfulness is making sure the patient is sitting down when they eat. They're not running around drinking coffee as they go or eating as they go. They are actually enjoying the food. This is very uh, in some countries, I know in, in a lot of countries in Europe, we sit down, we make this a social event, we enjoy our food, we sit down. In North America, it's very go, go, go. In big city all over the world, it's very go, go, go. So people eat standing up at their desk while they're working. That causes more stress and more digestive issues. So we want to be mindful of eating, of being calm, having a great environment when we eat. It's not always easy. I totally get it. But it's important not to 
be unaware. You gotta be aware to enjoy the food, not just gobble, 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 right? And you don't even know. You're watching TV and you're eating a whole bag of chips or a whole ice cream jar because you're not mindful. You're not present in your eating, right? So I talk to patients about that as well. So those things are very important, very TCM oriented. Diet is super important, okay? Okay. Let's go back. Oh, look at all those people giving me their points. <laughs> yes, spleen 6, stomach 36, liver 13. Yes, that is correct. And stomach 40 and spleen 3. That is correct. Okay, let's go back. Okay, so we said we were going to do upper digestive tract. Let me clean the board for a second. So again, let's do a, a TCM diagnosis. But we still have basic points that we want to put for that, right? So yes, Fang Long, stomach 40, Zhu Li, stomach 36. Look at you guys all chinese me up. I love it when we speak Chinese. I don't speak Chinese, but I love, love the poetic part of the Chinese language that TCM has brought into my life. So the first one we want to talk about and we want to put often is liver 14. So you don't have to always put it, but it's one of the best points for the upper digestive tract issues, like nausea, like gallbladder pain, like acid reflux, like vomiting, right? So anything that's in the upper digestive tract, liver 14 is a really good point to start with and you can put because it is the front move point of um, the liver. Right, So it is really going to work well if there is actually physical liver issues or physical gallbladder issues. Right, It is not going to get rid of the gallbladder stones, but it's going to relieve the pain. And if we can help relieve the pain, that's great. So that's a basic point when it comes to um, uh, the um, upper digestive tract. Of course, the, we are going to have to put the front move point of stomach, which is REN12, because it's right where the stomach is located. So this is good for any kind of stomach, physical stomach issue, like acid reflux, indigestion, nausea, vomiting, etc. It is also the influential point of the foo organ, which are really part of the digestive system, right? The foo organs, which are the stomach, the large intestine, the small intestine, the bladder, the gallbladder, and the child. So it is going to help in the digestive system as well. So REN12, if you can do it, Sometimes people have a lot of pain in the stomach and they don't want to be touched because it's too painful. But if there is a lot of stomach issue and you can actually needle that area, this is a basic point. Stomach, front move point, REN12. So we got those two points, right? All right, so liver 14 and REN12. Then if there is pain, okay, if the stomach is in pain, you have to put the she cleft point of the stomach, which is stomach 34. So this is when there is a lot of stomach pain, right, specifically, uh, really acute stomach pain. Also, if there's a lot of burping or vomiting, that can be used during pregnancy. Because during pregnancy, often you can't use REN12 because obviously you can't needle the belly. So this is a really good point, stomach 34. If there is stomach pain or a lot of vomiting or nausea, that can help the patient. So that's basic. Again, this is specific to pain, right? Gallbladder 24 is the front move point of the gallbladder. So because of that, it is a good point if there is gallbladder pain, as in physical gallbladder pain, but also if there is a lot of acid reflux, vomiting due to gallbladder issue, as in Western physical gallbladder issue, okay? So that I wouldn't put all the time, but if there is gallbladder issue, which is upper digestive tract, then I would pick this point as well. Now, the best point, of course, the best point. Uh, thank you, Corinne. Yes, if uh, absolutely. I like to talk about pregnancy because I do. Uh, Corinne uh, just um, uh, was saying that, uh, oh, here we go. Uh, that great add on with the pregnancy. Thank you for saying this. Yeah, because I know sometimes we, we don't want to forget that when there are pregnant women, there's points we cannot do. So it's important to know that, you know, uh, what to do during pregnancy and what are the options we have. So one of the points we have during pregnancy uh, that is uh, uh, very common to use is pericardium 6. I think pericardium 6 is the, the best point that is distal, right? apart from REN12, that is distal, that is the best point for upper digestive tract or stomach chi rebelling, right? So specifically, 
when the stomach chi rebelling is also related to anxiety, right? So when someone is anxious, it could be that they're anxious because they're going to speak in front of a crowd or they're going to go live on YouTube and they go, oh my God, what am I doing? Uh, all those people can see me. Ah! So anyway, when people get anxious, sometimes right, nausea can come up and we feel like we're going to vomit because we're so anxious, right? So this is one of the best points. Pericardium 6, I love for that because it's a great point for anxiety but great point for anxiety when it affects our stomach chi, right? And this is, again, this is anxiety that is creating or generating uh, stomach to be rebelling. So that's often the case. But it's also one of the best points to bring stomach chi down for acid reflux, belching, vomiting, nausea during pregnancy because it is a... Um, confluent point of the yin wei meridian, which is an extra vessels, and all extra vessels um, are related to kidney or reproductive system, and they're related to essence because extra vessels carry essence. So pericardium 6, specifically combined with spleen 4, which is also the confluential point of the chong vessel, is a very good combination during pregnancy for nausea or first trimester nausea or morning sickness. So pericardium 6 and spleen 4, a great combo. And of course, you would put stomach 36 in there, right? That would be really good. Probably stomach 40 as well. But in general, a great combo, PC6 and spleen 4, for pregnancy morning sickness. That's a really good combo to have. Um, like I said, with stomach 36 and stomach 40, that really will bring down that that really constant uh, nausea or vomiting for some women that can be pretty, pretty bad, right? So, okay. So PC6, one of the best points. People can acupressure it as well. You can show people how to acupressure, right? Really one of the best points when it comes to uh, upper digestive tract stomach chi rebelling. And you don't have to have a diagnosis with that. You can use it anytime it happens. It's a safe point, so it's great. Obviously, making a diagnosis is the best way and the best outcome. Always look for the root cause, right? Because you'll get a better outcome. But that would be a great point. Ha <laughs> ha! Stomach 44. I love stomach 44. The reason I do is this is really one of the best points for specifically stomach heat and stomach fire. Okay, so uh, oh, whoop. Oh, look at me uh, uh, moving things around a little bit too much. Hold on. Uh, here we go. That's better. I uh, pushed something without even knowing. So stomach heat or stomach fire is very common in clinical practice, specifically, it could come up with two things. So one of the root cause is, uh, in the five element, liver over-controlling stomach, right? Or wood over-controlling earth. So when wood over-control earth, it is affecting either spleen, stomach, or both, right? So if it's affecting the spleen, that means liver is stagnated, it's very stressed, there's a lot of pressure, and then it's depleting the spleen, making us fatigue, loose stools, cravings, etc. Or it can go to the stomach. When we're really stressed, then things are going to affect the stomach, and stomach's going to start being rebelling. And a lot of time, all this excess could be liver heat or liver yang rising, right? Too much heat in the liver can create too much stomach heat. So stress is a big part of, for example, bleeding ulcers. So we have stomach heat. And then we have stomach fire, right? So we have stomach heat and stomach fire. Now, both are going to have basic symptoms of heartburn, acid reflux, bad breath, right? That's going to come up for sure because those are heat, right? Maybe bleeding gums, acid regurgitation. That is going to come up. Maybe vomiting, maybe nausea, but... The difference is, what's the difference between heat and fire? Fire is worse than heat. Yes, it is, obviously, right? It's like on fire. So fire means there's extra to it because it's worse. Fire means that there will be bleeding. So the difference between stomach heat and stomach fire is with stomach fire, now there's bleeding. For example, if you have bleeding ulcers or if you're vomiting blood, right? So bleeding ulcers, bleeding gums, that is stomach fire. It's worse than the heat, right? If there's no bleeding, it's only heat. When there's bleeding, there's fire. 
That's the difference. No matter what, stomach 44 is the best point because it clears stomach heat and stomach fire. It is really good to bring stomach chi down but also clear the heat. Now, if there is stomach heat or stomach fire, we want to clear the heat. So stomach 44 is your first point. Large intestine 11 would also be adding up because large intestine 11, first of all, it's a large intestine point, so it's still part of digestion, more lower track, but it is clearing heat as well. So you're trying to clear heat as much as possible, and you probably want a diet that is much more cooling for a bit, not cold, but not spicy. Definitely those people would have worse pain if there was spicy food, right? It would increase the pain, it would increase the bleeding, it would increase the heartburn, acid reflux, all that. So we want to make sure that we do stomach 44 LI11, and then we want to figure out the diet that is going to obviously cool this. And of course, we have to address the root cause, which would be, let's say, the stress with liver yang rising. And we can bring liver yang down with points like liver 2 and liver 3. Make sense? Okay, so that's my little uh, bracket in there. Beautiful. Thanks, Gal. I got... Uh, I got stomach 44. Everybody is giving me the thumbs up. I love it. That's awesome. Yes. Uh, pericardium 6 and spleen 4 for morning sickness. Yes, absolutely. Awesome. Beautiful. Ask questions as we go. I love questions, so I don't uh, worry about being interrupted. I will remember where I am, I promise. <laughs> okay. So stomach 44, very specific to stomach heat, as you can see in here, right? Bleeding gums, um, having acid reflux, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a really, really good point to have when it's specifically with heat. Okay, let's move down. See, this is very basic, right? I'm giving you basic stuff, but those basic uh, treatment and points are very useful and they work really well. And sometimes when you have patients that come in and you're treating them for, I don't know, fertility issue, but they're starting to having digestive tract issue, you want to address that as well, right? So sometimes it's hard to have to combine and to, we don't want to overburden the person and put too many points. But it's good to have the nuggets or the basics because it helps everybody, including the person that you're treating, right? So, okay. So let's look at lower digestive tract symptoms. Oh, look at me uh, pushing a button and moving things around. I don't even know how I do that. <laughs> uh, should you always address points in pairs? So Dan was asking, should you always address points in pairs? That's a good question. It depends. So for example, when we talked about spleen four and PC6, during pregnancy, right? So if we talk about spleen 4 PC6 during pregnancy, during pregnancy, I try to put less needles, right? We want to be more gentle in our treatment. So usually I will pair them opposite side. So those two points work together, right? To try to balance the digestive system and the nausea, the vomiting, the morning sickness. So I would put spleen 4 on the right, PC6 on the left. PC6 on the left, spleen 4 on the right. Okay, I would pair them in opposite side, right? If I'm going to put stomach 36 because there is digestive system issue, I probably would do bilaterally with stomach 36. But with spleen 4 and PC6, I will put them on opposite sides, so only on one side. So I don't always pair. It depends on how many points I have, how many treatment, what the treatment is, the treatment principles. And so it, it all depends on each patient. So sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. So good question. Awesome. All right, so let's look at the lower digestive tract. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, here comes LI4, commander point of the face, but also UN source point of the large intestine. Okay, so what does that mean? The UN source points come from the UN chi. UN chi is the source chi, right? Who we are at the source, at the base at the genetic level. So UN source of the large intestine mean that if you've had, or if the patient, of course, has had large intestine, physical large intestine or colon issue 
for a long, long time, maybe since they were a kid, or maybe it's their family, this genetic issue, right? They all have colon issue, and that's been around the family. You want to do LI4 because it's going to protect the colon. It's going to help the source, right? The source chi. So that's really important. Now, what we have to remember also is that LI4 cannot be needled during pregnancy. Cheers. Oh. I talk, I have to drink. It's water, I promise. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so LI4 can't be used during pregnancy, unfortunately, right? So I'm going to tell you what we're going to use when we have bowel issues in pregnancy because we can't use this point. But in general, this is a really good point if there's deep-seated bowel issue for a long time, okay? So that's a really good, good point to use. When you see people have a lot of... Um, cystic acne or a lot of uh, acne on the face, maybe cystic or red. It could be a hormonal, absolutely. But a lot of time it's due to diet. It's due to the food they're eating, the inflammatory, uh, the food that gives them inflammation of the gut and it reflects on the skin. Because remember, large intestine and the lung in TCM, the metal element, the large intestine and the lung are connected to skin. Right? They show on the skin when it's going out of whack or when it's out of balance. So it is really important to look at that perspective. Right, So if there is a lot of skin issue, the skin is reflecting what's going on inside, then LI4 has to be put in there because it means that the gut is inflamed or it's not working properly. So we want to do LI4 to try to start to help the healing process and the inflammation down. Okay, obviously that's not the only thing you do, but that gives you an idea why we use LI4. Of course, if there's any lower digestive tract issue, we are going to use the front mu pointer of the large intestine. So the same for the upper tract, we had used REN12, the front mu point of stomach. For the lower tract, we want to use specifically stomach 25, one of the best points for large intestine issues. So it doesn't matter if it's irritable bowel syndrome, diarrhea, constipation, uh, diverticulitis, any bowel issue, you have to do stomach 25. Okay? I'm going to look on my board and talk about the digestive diamond. Okay, so the digestive diamond is something that we use a lot also in clinical practice. Again, you want to do a TCM diagnosis, but there's basic points you could do to help that person specifically at this time. So let's say this is the belly button, right? So the belly button or the navel, whatever you want to call it. We are going to do stomach 25, okay? We'll put stomach 25 here. So right at the belly button, we'll say that's too soon and that's too soon. Here we go. Okay, so that's your stomach 25. That's your two points. And then we're going to add up two more points, REN 9 and REN 6. Okay. This is called the digestive diamond. Because it looks like a beautiful diamond. <laughs> okay? So the digestive diamond is two points of the front mu point, which is stomach 25, plus REN6, plus REN9, right? So this combination is really good for any kind of bowel issues. Okay? So stomach 25, we said, was the point for any bowel issue. But adding up those two, having the four diamond point, makes it even better. This is a fantastic combination that works really, really well to balance and to help specifically when there's acute symptoms, let's say acute diarrhea, acute constipation, or the person has lots of gas, right? Gas is a huge thing. As I said when I introduced, in our introduction today, I was singing and I was talking about how I was going to talk about gas. So if someone has a lot of gas, that also works really well. So it's very good for symptomatic, right? And it's okay to do a, a diagnosis, but it's good for symptomatic. Now, if we look at the large intestine issue, right? If you look at the large intestine uh, itself, right, the colon, so the colon, don't uh, quote me, I'm going to make it very easy, okay? That's the colon, that's the worst colon ever, but that's the colon. The, the matter, the fecal matter that enters through the ileocecal valve from the small intestine 
will go up, down, and this way, right? And then out to the rectum and out, right? That's the fecal matter is going to go this way. So if it goes this way, this is what we usually say. In, if there is constipation, you want to push it down and out, right? So you want to go. So if there's constipation, we are going to go clockwise, right? If there's constipation, we are going to go clockwise, meaning that we are going to needle the person. Yes, we are going to needle the person starting at REN 6, and then the second point, stomach 25, and then REN 9, and then stomach 25. If you are stimulating those points, start stimulating REN 6, tuck, 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 in that order, starting right here. Make sense? Okay, so that's how you do it. Okay. Yes, you're still with me? Okay. If the person has diarrhea, on the other hand, we are going to do the opposite. We are going to go counterclockwise, because if there's diarrhea, we want to stop the diarrhea, right? We want to slow it down and slow everything down so we don't have loss of bowel control. So we go counterclockwise. We go this way. And usually we start with REN 9. So we start with REN 9, stomach 25, REN 6, and stomach 25. Yes? So a big drawing on this. So remember that for constipation, go clockwise, and for diarrhea, go counterclockwise, against the flow of the large intestine or with the flow of the large intestine. Of course, you want to look at excess deficiency, what's the TCM pattern for the constipation or diarrhea. By the way, below this video, in the explanation, in the little commentary, I've put the link to my treatment principles, all treatment principles for constipation, diarrhea, uh, nausea, vomiting, and ulcerative colitis. So if you want the full gamut, you can go and click the link, and I have PDF and treatment protocol for all those things in details. So that is below the video if you want a bit more. But got it? Digestive diamond. This is something we use a lot in clinical practice. I love to use it. It works really well. If someone has a lot of gas, like I said, if someone has, um, you know, IBS, anything, a lot of bloating, a lot of digestive issue in the lower digestive tract, this digestive diamond rocks. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> Let's go back to the uh, presentation. Good? Okay. You still with me? I'm just cleaning my board, you know, doing everything. I feel like I'm in class. Uh, <laughs> I am in class. I'm just in the class where, you know, in my living room or in my uh, office room. So stomach 25 with the digestive diamond is really, really good way to uh, address any digestive system, lower digestive system issue. Uh, by the way, I'm going to take a little break of talking about all this and show you that this is my uh, Acupoint Made Easy book. This is the PDF. So there's a PDF version and a printed version. The printed version literally um, really ships all over the world. The PDF has a table of content, and it has also video links to complement the PDF. So I think that's very useful as well. And all the little graphics you're seeing today are all in either the book or the PDF because they're the same. They have exactly the same content, except the PDF has the video link, and of course the book is a physical book. So that and the link to get either of those is below this video in case you're interested for Christmas. Oh yeah, it's the holiday presents. <laughs> you know, that's my plug for today. Okay, let's go back to the presentation. Okay, so we talked about stomach 25. Let's continue the journey. LI-11. So we talked about LI-11 earlier, uh, hiatus hernia. So hiatus hernia, sorry, I'm looking at uh, questions. So yes, so any tips for hiatus hernia? So hiatus hernia would be stomach pain, right? So REN-12 is really good, but when there is a hernia, we also want to move blood. So we want to do LI-4 and liver-3. We want to relieve the pain as well. So that would be your basic treatment without doing a full diagnosis. Make sense? Okay, cool. Uh, wow, the digestive diamond, really good. <laughs> Obrigada. Oh, I love that. Uh, okay, so I love that. So I love what Elisangela, I love your name, Elisangela. 
Uh, she said she needles the digestive diamond on herself to treat IBS. Perfect. Love that. Yeah, it'll help a lot. So those are really cool. So LI11. LI11 is going to be used if there is heat. You can use it for any kind of bowel issue, um, specifically if there's heat. What does that mean? It means that the bowel issue is going to be smelly bowel movement. So it could be constipation or diarrhea, but when the person goes to the bathroom, it really smells and not like Moses. <laughs> so it's very strong smell, very bad odor. That is heat affecting the large intestine. So it doesn't matter if it's, you know, diarrhea or constipation or IBS, but if it is smelling bad, that is a point you want to use, LI11. And it's also um, a really good point if there is bowel issue due to anger. So when the person gets angry or irritable or just like, oh, get frustrated, and they have really a lot of bowel issue like IBS or they get really explosive diarrhea, LI11, great point, because it's a ghost point for anger or feeling out of control. So when we feel out of control and it affects the bowel, this is a fantastic point. And uh, Humor is asking, can we massage this point instead of needling? Yes, you can acupressure, you can massage. Um, I believe personally that ac acupuncture is much more um deeper so it goes faster and it's of course you know when you massage you would have to massage uh, for quite a while but yes acupressure works really well for points as well so i would recommend that you know i recommend acupressure to my patients for their children so children that don't want to be needled or are scared or young children that are scared and fair enough right we have acupressure points we can show them we can say hey why don't you massage this area on your child and it works really well children respond very well to acupressure. Adult, older adult, not as much, okay? But children, really quickly. Older adults, like in their 80s, very hard to respond to it because as we're aging, our healing process takes longer. And so acupressure, is pro acupressure sorry, would not be uh, as effective, I would say. So uh, someone says, okay. So Sean was saying, I've had um, a leave drug two weeks ago, so uh, taking a drug called Aleve, which is for pain. Since then, I have rashes, and I feel like there's air trapped inside my stomach. Yeah, yeah, side effects of drugs is a cause of issue for the stomach, right? That can be, so for sure. So Sean, like, it's important. You could get acupuncture for that, for sure. I would definitely do acupuncture uh, for that. And then uh, look at your diet and be very gentle on yourself, right? So making sure that you eat really what I call baby food, food that doesn't put more pressure on your digestive uh, system, meaning pre-digested like stews and soups and things that are very, very gentle. I call it baby food, right? Mushy food. That would be the easiest thing to do for sure. So that's what I would recommend anyway. Okay, so upper digestive tract we've done. Now lower digestive tract, we talked about the diamond, stomach 25, LI11. LI7, so large intestine 7 is the sheet left point of the large intestine. So that is a really good point when there is pain. Large intestine pain or lower abdominal pain that is related to digestion, of course, not to the uterus or to the ovaries, but to the digestive system. So if there's a lot of ileocecal valve pain, for example, ileocecal valve syndrome is very common. That's where the food goes from the small intestine to the large intestine. A lot of people have pain there or appendicitis, anything that is not going to cure anybody, but it'll relieve the pain until you figure out what the problem is is okay you're very welcome sean sean saying thank you <laughs> makes sense right so li7 great for pain for sure to relieve the pain sanjo 6 love sanjo 6 now we go more in specific constipation one of the best points for constipation sanjo 6 very good for that you have to put the sanjo 6 when there is constipation still do a diagnosis and like i said Below this video, I have a treatment protocol for constipation that has all the TCM patterns with all the points and what to do. You can go and click the link and it'll get you there on my website. In the meantime, Sanjao 6 has to be done. So if I have a, again, we're going to talk about pregnant women, Sanjao 6 is safe to do because I can't with a diamond 
on a pregnant woman, right? I can't do the belly, so I can't do the digestive diamond. I can't do stomach 25. I can't do those points on the pregnant woman. But Sanjiao 6, I can. And pregnant women get a lot of constipation, right? So that is a point that works really well. Another point that works really well for pregnant women is stomach 37 for constipation or diarrhea. So in general, um, stomach 37 is the lower horsey point of the large intestine, which means it's a great distal point to relieve any issue of the large intestine, specifically when it's in excess. Okay, so excess pattern, like large intestine heat, damp heat in the large intestine, mostly for excess pattern. And so if there is diarrhea or constipation during pregnancy, I use that point all the time because it's safe with Sanjiao 6, let's say, for constipation, and that'll help, and it's super safe to do. So it's fantastic that way. Um, yes, yes, I see Alex is asking, any good point for pre-diabetes? Well, that's a big question, and I'm not going to talk about that because that's a disorder, Alex, and I want to talk about symptoms today. That's a big thing because it depends if it's uh, due to diet because it's pre-diabetes type 2, it is genetic. Like, there's a lot of question for that, so it's really hard for me to say, but stomach 40 is a really good point to balance blood sugar. So I would say stomach 40 has to be part of the protocol. Um, I'm going to put this one from Kanita. Is there no constipation, no diarrhea, then clockwise or anti-clockwise uh, trying? Oh, the diamond. Okay. So the answer to this is there's no diarrhea, no constipation. So it's just pain or there's gas or whatever the problem is. You will do usually stomach 25 first and then rent 6 and then rent 9. So there's no counterclockwise or clockwise. Make makes sense? You just do your two stomach 25 your N6, and your N9. So stomach 37 with Sanjiao 6, great combo, specifically during pregnancy, when you can't use, uh, you know, the diamond, for example, or anything on the belly. Kidney 6. Kidney 6 is fantastic when there is constipation with dry stools. So this is chronic constipation, not acute. Chronic constipation with dry pebble stools, kind of like a yin deficiency dry pebble stools, right, or a blood deficiency. So if the person is very dry, sheep-like, pebble-like stool that are hard and dry, that is a really good point to, to add to your protocol. It's very specific. So constipation, you could do Sanjiao 6, right, but you would also put kidney 6. And then, of course, you could put the diamond. We're not talking about pregnancy. We're talking about no, uh, regular people that you can needle on the belly. So uh, kidney 6, Great for dry pebble stool like yin deficiency constipation. Bladder 57, what I like about this point is that it is really good when there is hemorrhoids. So if there's chronic constipation which leads to hemorrhoids, uh, this is a really good point. You can also combine it with arbi. Uh, if you're not sure, let me write that on the board. Arbi are two extra points. R means uh, two and by means white. So our by is our two extraordinary points that are on the arm that are really, really good for uh, hemorrhoids or hemorrhoids pain, right? So bladder 57 and our by will work really well as well. Um, yes, I see empty some, you're saying diarrhea, stomach 37. Stomach 37 can be used for diarrhea if it's, the, it's due to excess. If it's a diarrhea, that's due to excess. An excess diarrhea would be damp heat in, in the large intestine. A deficiency would be more a diarrhea that's spleen young deficiency. Okay, so that's the difference why we use stomach 37 or not. Good? Okay, you guys are on fire. Look at you. Uh, I'm so glad you guys are here and we're doing this together. Okay. We talked about constipation, constipation, let's talk about the opposite, diarrhea or too much loose stools or watery stools. So any diarrhea or loose stools or watery stools, we have to put split nine because this is the best point for dampness, right? So even if you don't have a diagnosis or you're not sure or you're trying or you have a diagnosis, split nine has to be there when there is bowel that is loose or diarrhea-like. That is the best point. Good? Okay. 
Ren 9, so here's the part of the diamond, right? Ren 9 is also one of the best points when there is bloating of the abdominal region, diarrhea, and also borborygmy. So borborygmy, a lot of time my students are like, what is that? And I always say it's this, borborygmy, borborygmy. Okay, it means that your, your digestive tract is talking to you. Borborygmy is when there's a lot of watery, slushy sound in your digestive tract, and it's making those watery sound, right? Like it's talking, my stomach is talking kind of thing. So the watery sound, that's borborygmy. So Ren 9 is really good for that as a complement to Spleen 9 for dampness, meaning for diarrhea. You have to put those two points as a basic point. Ren 4. So now Ren 4, I love Ren 4. Specifically, you can moxa Ren 4. Uh, is great when there's deficiency diarrhea or specifically young deficiency diarrhea. So young deficiency means you have no heat, no fire. That's why there's young deficiency. So this point is really good when there is young deficiency diarrhea. What does that look like? So young deficiency diarrhea doesn't smell. It's very watery. And often it happens only once in the morning. So the person wakes up, they go to have a bowel movement, it's completely diarrhea, and then they're fine the rest of the day. So they don't have another bowel movement, that's it. It's not like they have diarrhea all day long, right? It's just that early morning diarrhea with no smell, and most of the time after the person has had the diarrhea or the bowel movement, they feel really tired, really exhausted, right? That's a young deficiency diarrhea. So REN4, very, very good. When there is that kind of diarrhea, you can moxa to warm the young. That's what we want to do, okay? Steph is asking, is stomach 37 good for acupressure on kids? Yes. So if kids have constipation or diarrhea, you can do stomach 36, stomach 37, and you can acupressure that on the lower leg. It works quite well. You can also use back shoe point of the large intestine, which is bladder 25. That works really well as well, right? So there's lots of options for, yeah, you could totally acupressure for kids. Good. So for diarrhea or loose stool or watery stools, we have spin 9, REN 9, REN 4 if it's a deficiency, specifically a young deficiency. Spleen 5. Okay, so spleen 5 is really good when there is loose stools or diarrhea due to overthinking and worrying. So it's very emotional, right? The person is worrying too much or they're overthinking because they have lots of exam and they're studying or whatnot, and then they have a lot of loose stools. That is a spleen chi deficiency, okay? The person is usually fatigued. They have loose stools. Um, they eat, and then they need to go to the bathroom quite fast. That is due to the worry, and they worry too much, and they overthink too much. This is a really good point to add, because it's one of the best points for that, to help in that perspective, okay? So, having said all this, I want you guys to look at the links below and check out my website on the resources you're going to have all the treatment protocols. See this thing? Acupointment treatment protocol, protocol. Sorry. You're going to have nausea, vomiting, constipation, diarrhea, like all that. And I have stories. I have case studies in there that can help you understand how we do treatment. I really hope you found a lot. I put all those resources. This is all free. There's TCM Foundation. There's courses. There's so much that I do on my website, and I'm always on Facebook every day, 6 o'clock I post, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I post on Instagram as well, and I have lots of videos in this, uh, you know, YouTube channel. I really, really think that if you enjoy this, please subscribe. Make sure that, you know, you show me your love, because I love that. Oh, Corinne, I love this. Thank you. Corinne says, love your lecture. Very interesting and inspiring and love the way you lecture. Yay. Thank you, girl. You made my day. I love that very much. Uh, I think that's it for me. So I hope you really benefited from this. You really enjoyed it. And we're going to continue to do live uh, little classes so you guys can ask questions and we can like be really ask questions. I love that and, and you know I'm so happy you guys are here and you came because I know time is precious for everybody. So thank you, thank you everybody. I hope you really benefited. 
Thank you, awesome. I'm so glad. <laughs> Thank you, Melanie. Beautiful, awesome. Thank you, Diliana. So fun to see you. Oh my God, that's so cool. Thanks, Dan. And is Angela. Thank you from Victoria. Carmilla, thank you. Yes, I love it. When Jackie, thank you very much. I really appreciate City. Oh, thank you, my girl. And uh, I really, really, really am happy you guys showed up from all over the world. I know for some of you, it's super far. Janiki, thank you, guys. Caroline, thank you. You're welcome. It's awesome. And you are right. Truly, acupuncture rocks. <laughs> we are all super rock stars. All right. Beautiful. Thanks, Carmela. Have a great rest of your week. Fantastic day. And I will see you again. In the meantime, keep rocking it with TCM. Thank you from Scotland. Yay. <laughs> Bye, guys. That's awesome. I love it. Have a fantastic week. Keep rocking it, my friends. We're just changing the world one patient and one needle at a time.